So the first step is doing wheel maintenance because all the stuff I need to get to is in here is to take the wheel off. I've already disconnected the cables and it's made a lot easier with this stand here. So if you can get one, it makes a big difference. So I'm going to undo the nuts and then take it off. That was used to pull the cable away from the motor and it worked pretty well actually. Now this is the side that I'm actually interested on. This is the cover that will come off um, in order to give us access and also where the wires go. So I've got to take the brake rotor off first with a T25 bit. Now I have to undo these eight bolts, which are a hex four bit, I believe. So here is inside the motor that's been powering my e-bike. So in here we have the windings, as you can see. That's what the copper wire is, and it's a steel frame, which I thought was supposed to be waterproof, but as you can see, there's a bit of rust going around and no sealant or anything. These here are the hall sensors. You've got three sets of them. As you can see, one, two, three, and different wires. Um, the reason I've opened this up is basically to add a temperature sensor to it. Um, I've got to think where the best place is, um, possibly like there or something. Um, and then there are, those are the phase wires that go down and then connect up to here. And these are the magnets that run all the way around. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now for actually removing the stator from the motor, which is the central component, there are a few different ways of doing it. The first method, which I've seen done, Personally, I wouldn't do it, but you can. It's basically where you remove all the bolts as I've shown, and then you put a nut on the end of here, and then basically bang it on the ground to push the stator out. I'll link a video below if you want to see that done. Um, the other way, which is what I'm, I'm going to do and I've done, is to use one of these. Now, these are called gear pullers, um, and this is an eight inch gear puller. I've tried looking everywhere on the internet to find out what size to use and couldn't find any. So I bought the biggest one I could. Um, and yeah, an eight inch gear puller will do the job. You might be able to get away with a six one, I don't know. So the way it works is that this part goes over, there's a little dimple in the axle and then there's a point at the end of the puller. So those two go together in there like so and then the arms just fit around the motor underneath this ledge here like so so as you can see they're evenly spread around and then what you want to do is start tightening the puller just so it grips just hand tight and it should stay there it shouldn't just fall off yeah so you just want the arms to be underneath in between where the two bodies meet where the spokes attach all the way around and then for the central bit just to be resting in the middle of the shaft and at this point you get a 18 mil socket which is what goes in the mine or whatever size fits and you're basically going to start turning this clockwise to apply tension to the core which will basically push it out the other side so make sure you've done all the bolts so that will just be pushing against nothing and you should start to see it just kind of drop out the other side Noises like that are normal. There'll be a lot of kind of creaking and popping. That's just the bearings kind of releasing, basically. And then once it's through, you can just remove the arms and pull the puller out, which then gives you access to the inside of the hub. 
these are all the magnets that run round and then you have the stator itself uh, with all the copper windings and everything. Now for putting the stator back in you want to rest the housing on something hollow but sturdy like a bin like I'm doing and then lower it down gently over the top and make sure that the shaft goes in through the bottom bearing line it up square and then suddenly as you're doing that it will pull in and that's the magnets pulling the iron stator down um, now you might notice that when you look at it from the top um, it's pulled to one side more than the other that's fine that will be sorted out when you put the cover plate back on and screw it all down square and whilst it's open now will be a good time just to check that all the bearings are in good condition so just use a little flathead screwdriver just to pry up the seal and uh, as you can see there's plenty of grease in there and they're all spinning freely so that bearing is good to go so you can just um, put the cover back on in the same orientation and then just press it till it clicks and that's all done.